the segment we're going to be reading is The Realm of Atholoran. The first elf colonists to arrive in the Old World penetrated inland as far as the margins of the Great Forest, now known as the Forest of Loran. In those days, it was far greater in extent than it is now, although it is still vast. They named their wilderness, this wilderness, Atheloran, which in their tongue means the wood of the dawning of the world. Later, during the war between the elves and dwarves, and afterwards when the colonies were abandoned, it was this forest which most attracted the elves as a place to hide and live in. The reason for this was that the forest had remained almost untouched since the beginning of the world. Orcs and goblins had never found their way into the wood, and monsters were only encountered in its margins and the wooded foothills of the Grey Mountains. Beastmen had never profaned its glades with their uncouth rituals. Dwarf prospectors had passed it by and later were warded off by elves who took it upon themselves to guard the wood. The forest had thus remained a place where tree men and dryads could dwell undisturbed. Benign currents of magic seemed to pervade the forest, causing it to flourish. <clears throat> After the wood elves settled within the forest and appeased the woodland spirits to be welcomed by them as friends and guardians, they protected the forest through the ages when wandering tribes of men and orcs were migrating over the entire old. These tribes were deterred from entering the forest and considered it to be an eerie and dangerous place to be avoided. Elsewhere, men cleared forest with their axes to cultivate the land and build their settlements. Orcs hewed down trees to build their strongholds and burn on their feasting fires. Although vast tracts of wilderness persist throughout the old world, some of this has regenerated where fields and villages were devastated by wars while the remnants of virgin forest are penetrated by the tracks of merchants and traders. Of all the great forests of the old world, the forest of Lorin is the most wild and virgin. The Glades Within the forest of Lorin, the wooded landscape varies greatly. The forest runs from the plains of Bretonia up into the foothills of the Grey Mountains. It extends along the banks of two of the great rivers of the Old World for many hundreds of miles. Over this vast expanse, the nature of the vegetation changes from one part of the forest to another. In some places, the ground is high and rocky with crags and pinnacles of rock and boulders strewn among the trees. In other places, the ground is boggy with lakes within the forest itself. There are even huge clearings, which are like meadowlands, where the long grass predominates over the trees. Some areas are characterized by an abundance of a particular species of tree. Most of the forest is a strange, almost twilight world, bathed only in the muted sunlight or moonlight, able to penetrate the canopy leaves. Dotted around the forest, there are natural clearings which one can look up and actually glimpse the blue sky or the stars at night. The wood elves call these clearings glades. As well as being areas open to the sun, they are often places where magical currents flow close to the surface. Each of the hundreds of elves that first wandered into the forest settled in a different part. Some kindreds felt an attraction to one area rather than another. Once a kindred has, had chosen a glade as the focus of its settlement, the elves belonging to it began to adapt their way of life to the immediate surroundings. Each glade had a subtle influence on the kindred who settled there. Some kindreds did not settle for long in one place, but roamed in a nomadic way of life through the fastness of the forest. Wherever they settled for a short while, they chose the same kind of glade among the same kind of trees. The lore 
of the Wood Elves, tells of several glades within the forest of Lauren, each with its own distinctive character and settled by a particular kindred. Some glades are shared by all the kindreds, some others are shunned. The glades can be quite large areas, and each one is better described as a group of interconnected glades scattered over a wide area. Over time, the focus of settlement of a kindred may shift from one to another, but usually remains within the same area of the forest, except in the case of the nomadic kindreds. But these always search for the same kind of glades wherever they go within the wood. The King's Glade The vast and awesome glade is surrounded with great oak trees of immense girth and antiquity. When the elves first penetrated into the depths of the forest, they came upon this glade and decided to hold their councils and rituals here. It was undoubtedly a sacred place pervaded by magic. Not far from the glade itself is the vast Oak of Ages, in which Orion and Ariel were found transformed into the king and queen of the wood. Thus the glade became known as the King's Glade. Here the semi-divine king and queen preside over the realm of Athel Lauren and Old Court. They are revered as incarnations of the gods Kernos and Isha. The king and queen of the, in the wood are immortal. But each year, towards midwinter, they appear to die, as does the vegetation of the forest. Then they are entombed within the Oak of Ages, and brought out again, regenerated at the first signs of spring. Thus they endure from age to age, deep in wisdom and magical power. Over the centuries, elven mages skilled in the arts of tree singing have created a city among the trees in the King's Glade. Tree singing is an art by which means the growth of trees is accelerated and trained in particular ways. The branches of the great oaks were induced to entwine into walkways and canopies, galleries and vaults. These buildings and chambers are made entirely of living trees, branches, and foliage. Beneath the earth, the same methods have been used to create great hollow chambers walled in by the interwoven roots of the trees. Access to these vaults is made through the hollow trunks of living trees. Although vast in its extent, this city is virtually invisible to the untrained eye. It merges into the forest and is easily missed by the idle traveler and foe alike. Much of it is either above his head or beneath his feet. Furthermore, it is disguised by magic. An unwary traveler in the forest can thus walk through the king's glade, hardly aware of what is all around him, or that he is being watched by elven eyes. This is assuming he ever finds it at all. Most strangers will have been distracted away by magic. Others wander aimlessly for miles until they mysteriously emerge out of the forest again. The Ash Groves the ash groves are to be found along the banks of the great river that flows through the eastern part of Athelorin. Here the trees grow very thick and are almost impenetrable. Groves of dense ash have been, have been sung into particularly labyrinthine dwellings and galleries by the elves that live here. The kindred that settled here learned to cut the long and straight ash staves to make spears which they use for hunting and fishing. The Meadow Glades these glades are located in the southern part of Athelorin, between the river and the mountains. Here the trees are often sparse, opening out into broad clearings of meadow grass. It is a place where wild horses roam and rare unicorns may be seen. The kindred of Equos, who were master horsemen and horse breeders, settled here when they migrated from the coastal colonies. They brought with them their elven steeds and mares and let them loose in the meadow glades. They could not bear to take ship to Ulthuan with the last remaining warriors, because it meant leaving behind so many fine horses. Instead, they led their herds eastward into the wilderness. These were the ancestors of the elven steeds which the wood elves now ride. The kindred of Equos provide all the charioteers and horsemen of Athelorin. The Glade of Woe 
is dominated by a single huge blasted oak. This hull of a tree stands blackened and scorched. Its gnarled branches claw the sky like hands raised in anguish and outrage. The trunk is hollow, and the void extends deep into the earth. For the elves, this is an awesome blaze of dark ritual. Here mages gather for their secret councils. It is a place towards which the vilest of invaders are lured to be ambushed and slaughtered by the elves. Their bones are entwined in the roots of the tangled thorn bushes. Despite all this, the glade is not such a grim place as one might think. The trees and bushes around are laden with purple and blood-red berries which the elves gather to make drinks and potions, and the ground is carpeted with earth-hugging forest plants and flowers. It is an area rich in fungi, lichens, and mosses of all kinds. Indeed, all the ingredients needed by the mages for their magical potions. The Glade of Pines The Glade of Pines is to be found on the slopes of the Grey Mountains, where the forest envelops the foothills. The crisp, cold air favors pine trees rather than any other species. There are many different types, and some individual trees are extremely old and gnarled. These entwine their roots around the high pinnacles and crags of weathered rock. The cliffs have caves and crevices which provide layers for many kinds of wild beasts. The elves have sung both trees and rocks into fine dwellings, where both tree trunks and stalagmites act as pillars of the many halls and galleries. The kindred who settled here learned to use the pine resin for many things, including wine and magical potions. The region is abundant with wild animals such as bears, wildcats, and birds of prey. The elves dwelling here developed a strange affinity for the beasts and birds. The kindred of the pines includes warriors who have learned to ride on the backs of giant war hawks. many dark and eerie groves of old yew trees scattered throughout the forest. Yew wood is excellent for making bows and magic wands or staffs. The yew groves were therefore sought out by kindred seeking to make new bows, and also by mages. The vast age of many yew trees means they have been... Oh, excuse me. The vast age of many yew trees means they have absorbed enormous amounts of magical energy drawn up through their roots and stored in the heartwood. The kindred of the yew includes many nomadic clans and wandering mages who move from one yew glade to another, dwelling for a time in each. The Beech Glades The Beech Glades cover the gently sloping hills that rise in the very midst of the forest of Lauren. Because the land rises between the two rivers that encompass the forest of Lauren, it can be seen from a long way away across the heathlands. These hills are wooded with huge beech trees of immense age. The branches of these trees have been sung by the elves into intertwining vaults, which support their galleries and chambers. The trunks of the trees are thus like a vast pillared hall through which a traveler could wander without ever knowing that elven folk were close. The only thing he would ever be aware of would be the strange and enchanting sound of elven singing and laughter, apparently coming from all around him, and yet from nowhere in particular. The Wild Heaths The forest of Lauren is surrounded by vast tracts of open heath and scrub, here the stunted trees and occasional groves mingle with open stretches of bracken and heather. Rocky crags and boulders emerge from the tangled brambles. Here and there are standing stones, ancient burial cairns made of huge boulders and stone circles. Some of these may have been built by savage tribes of men in remote antiquity. The origins of others are a mystery. Hidden within them are unknown treasures and barrels. This landscape forms the borderlands of Athalorin. Looking across the heaths, the vast green forest can be seen. Anyone who dares venture to
towards the forest risks being ridden down by the kindred of Equos in their war chariots and being chased by glade riders with their lances and bows. These warriors tirelessly ride across the heaths, searching and tracking intruders. Sometimes rival champions will race chariots or steeds between great standing stones. By night they camp in the groves of stunted oaks or return to the forest itself to be relieved by another troop riding out from the meadow glades. At one time this land was disputed between the wood elves and Bretonian barons. There were many brisk and bloody encounters that would be Paravon, I believe. That would be the Bretonians there. The wood elves would often feign flight into the forest pursued by reckless knights who never returned. Eventually, the barons learned to respect the power of Athaloran, and the Bretonian king himself recognized the dominion of the king and queen in the wood over this disputed land. Some of the tallest of the great standing stones were chosen to mark the boundaries of the realm, beyond which no man may pass without leave of the king and queen in the wood. They are marked with carvings and painting, painted designs of the wood elves. These are charms to ward off enemies by magic and encircle the realm with protective enchantments. To go beyond the stones is to bring doom down upon oneself. So that was um, probably a little bit of a shorter video, um, but that was the realm of Athaloran. And um, my throat is kind of starting to hurt, so unfortunately we're going to have to stop there. But next time, we will talk about the history of Athaloran, which is exciting. Um, and I'd just like to point out, for anyone familiar with, uh, with tabletop fantasy, um, the inclusion of Wood Elf Chariots is, um, uh, it's, it's funny. chariots in 8th edition and it's just a f it doesn't really mesh with their uh, their army design at all um, but you know that's old hammer for you I guess anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this um, and I'll see you guys next time bye bye